I'm Mark Babbitt, CEO and founder of U-Turn, and you're watching Facets Television. I'm Kevin McDonald. You're watching Facets TV, and tonight we have an amazing guest with us and somebody who I respect immensely, Master Bob White. Master White has a studio in Costa Mesa, California, and Master White, for the past 40-plus years, has been churning out what I would say are some of the world's best. They're best because they win. They're champions. These are not just people who put on a belt and say, look at me, I'm a black belt. These are people who win in competition. They put their lives into this art, and they earn the belt that they have. Why am I saying that? That is because part of what we're going to talk about today is the whole idea that people are promoting or self-promoting into really high ranks in the martial arts when there's some question about how many high-ranking people can we have and at what point do you really earn a 10th degree, an 8th degree. And we're going to talk a lot with Mr. White about some other things, but I wanted to start with that. Thank you so much for coming in. Always great to see you, Kevin. I really Thank you. I appreciate it. So, you know, I hate to start with the term, but I think it's one of the things that will tell people what I'm feeling right now, and that's this whole term of the McDojo. Um, it's the, the arts, when I grew up, were something that was very deep and core to what we believed as human beings, and it was more philosophical than it was, you know, something you just did. Um, today, it seems that it's become very mechanical. Uh, there's even terms like belt selling and belt buying, where people get belts just because they go to the, to the studio every week. Um, give me a little bit of a background on how you feel about this controversy. Well, it's a shame, for one thing. Uh, when I first started uh, karate here in Orange County, it was 1964, and I think there was two studios at the time. Uh, what's taken place, of course, is so many people have been interested throughout the years. It has become a business, and as a direct result, business want to operate on a profit, so they have discovered that selling ranks, um, it, there's an old saying, if you could afford it, they'll award it. You know, that's kind of what we're running across. Uh, so it is something that's kind of diluted the quality of our art, which if you are truly a martial artist and you've dedicated your life to the martial arts and are concerned with the integrity of the art, it's something that you truly hate to see. I think it does a couple of things from an outside perspective. And while I am a martial artist myself, um, I haven't uh, promoted or ranked in over 11 years. So... I'm not part of this growth program because I exist, therefore I get more, more belts. Yes. But on the other hand, I do understand what it could do to someone who has spent their life dedicated in a way that I am not right now. So I think it's really unfortunate to have someone who is a what I would classify as a true high-ranking person, 8th, 8th, ninth, 10th degree person, having 20 people in the room with them with the same claim of rank. Um, how, what does that do to someone like you? Well, it, it's... Life? really has gone through such uh, growing pains, I guess. Uh, martial arts, actually karate, has really only been available to the general public for less than 100 years, less here in the United States. Mm -hmm. What took place is a tremendous growth, tremendous expansion, where interest, as I mentioned, two schools in 64 to hundreds right now here in Orange County. So what's taken place is because of going through the growing pain, People don't know. The general public, when they go into a studio, they're really concerned with price and proximity. They want convenience. Their lifestyle here in, in Orange County is so crazy anyway. Yeah. They want to be able to get to the soccer field, get to the other types of lessons, get their school homework. So they want the school that's closest to them. Many times when they see high-ranking black belts, they think that that guarantees validity. But unfortunately... Uh, it doesn't. You know, the belt only covers an inch and a half of your waist or inch and three quarters of your waist. The rest is, is the person. So I think um, it certainly is a factor, not only for the local schools, but around the world. There are people that are in maybe not necessarily third world countries, but in impoverished countries that people will go there and sell the rank to them. They don't know, so they purchase it, but there's people that are making fortunes just by selling rank. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's, it's, it became a realization of how dangerous it was because as someone who travels into some pretty, what I would call, um, risky parts of, of town mm -hmm. in a variety of places around the country, uh, um, 
overconfident person who believes that they're an extraordinary person in fighting and has this high level of, of self-defense capability is very likely to make a mistake and find out they, they, they really don't understand it that well. Well, it's really true. Unrealistic uh, assessment of your abilities can get you in an, in an awful lot of trouble. Some of my students are police officers. Captain Ron Sanchez has been with me for 40 plus years. A great black belt, but also dealing with society's worst, and he has seen that over and over again, where people had this illusion of being able to take care of themselves and find out unpleasantly that they had been duped. Yeah, I think that's probably the most unfortunate part for me. There's two things. There's those at the highest levels in the in the arts that have earned their position and really shouldn't be diluted by those that haven't. And then there is that whole idea that folks are, are being presented with this concept that somehow they're you know great fighters or they're you know great practitioners. And I I'm an example of someone who black belted but did it um, as an art, not as a fighter. I never mm -hmm. did competition. I never entered the ring. That wasn't my thing, right? Um, so I see the guys today, the MMA guys, looking at these high ranks, and they you know it drives them nuts because they're well, it's a lot different. Karate is a lot of. Theory and the, the gentleman that's the, the head guy at the uh, studio can walk around with his thumbs in his belt and, and uh, really talk about fighting, kind of like a paper tiger. One thing that I really admire about the jiu-jitsu schools is those guys are get out on the mat. Yeah. You know, it's not just yeah. talk. It's something, uh, let's get out on the mat and we can demonstrate our skills. And so many times in karate, it's, it's all about uh, not the bluff necessarily, but it's about how well you can talk versus how much you can really put it out on the floor. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the things about Master White Studio. If you go there, you will see running around the ceiling of the building um, all of the championship trophies that this studio has put out. So this isn't an accident that I have this man in my studio today. Um, how is it, that, now I understand that you resigned from an association recently, what, what brought that about? Well, it's the American Campo Senior Council, uh, and in reality, the people that are involved in this association are wonderful people. They've been dedicated, serious martial artists their entire lives, and they are the, what I consider the cream of the crop. I honestly just did not have time to do it. I'm a full-time instructor. I also am involved in a, a charity that we throw on every year that is very, very time consuming, but it's, it's work that is very pleasing to my family and to my students. So mm -hmm. the, the separation for the American Kempo Senior Council really had nothing to do with a philosophy change or difference, mm -hmm. more so and there's only so many hours in the day. What they're going to do is they want to start having tests for potential instructors so that there is a standard in which the person has to meet in order for them to become an instructor or a, a degree of black belt. A very admirable work. Uh, a guy by the name of Lee Wedlake has uh, really put a lot of this together and got John Sepulveda, Steve Labounty, and Brian Duffy and you know just some really good martial artists but it was just something to, in all fairness there's only so many hours in the day and I just couldn't put the time in that I would want to. It was started in the early 90s and it didn't continue because it really wasn't the service that we had envisioned. Uh, they've, they're kind of putting it back together again and I certainly hope that it ends up being something that is making uh, Kempo unique and something that's very special. Well, I know that that hierarchy can help as long as it really does come to a point where it's helping to drive some ethics and, and some organization and some structure into the how the things go, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what I think those organizations should be about. Let me ask you a question on the bit of the controversial side. Let's say you have a black belt who leaves one part of town, and I know this has happened, that's why I'm asking the question. So they leave Southern California with a first or second degree. They arrive in Missouri or wherever it might be, and all of a sudden they're an eighth degree. They're now promoting people based on that record. What do you tell the folks that have spent the past five, eight, ten years earning belts under that individual? They better get used to the serenity prayer real quick yeah. because in reality, we have to accept the things we cannot change. But, you know, it's, it's attraction versus promotion. I mean, if somebody is maintaining a high standard, then chances are, as time goes on, people will be drawn to that. Mm -hmm. The illusion that rank makes the difference in an instructor, unfortunately, 
uh, is just not a reality. It's more what the instructor brings to the table. There's an old saying, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Uh, and it's so true. If you yeah. get an instructor who has pride in the art, he probably will not be the person that's putting on these high ranks that have no history. You know, it's very simple. We, Ed Parker had a family tree when he died, uh, and the people that are on that family tree have some longevity. If they're not on that tree, very seldom will be somebody that is that has a history. It's not that it can't happen. It's starting to become, well, I think the tree was made in the early 80s, so there are some years behind it, and some people have certainly developed tremendous skills throughout that period, but mm -hmm. I think um, my suggestion to somebody, if you're interested in a karate studio, is do a little bit of homework, check the history of the, of the head instructor, find out what his uh, lineage is, where he came from, maybe even talk to the instructor that they say that they're coming from. Has there been any thoughts about building a lineage um, that, is, that is signed off by the people that know? Because one of the problems that I have found is that you can do your research, they claim something, their friend reinforces it, the friend of the friend reinforces, they all come from the same game, right? So Correct. How do you, uh, has there been any thought in the Kempo world to take the, Ken, the Kempo situation and go, here's the tree, here's the folks that we know, here's the ranking people that we recognize? Mm -hmm. Is there any thought to doing something Well, I think like the that? American Kempo Senior Council has that in mind. I think okay. they really do want to add legitimacy and being able to check a lineage, um, which they would be able to do. I mean, there's a lot of diversity in this organization. There's people in Idaho, John Sepulveda, Steve Labounty, Northern California, Brian Duffy, Texas, Lee Wedlate, Texas. So, I mean, these guys have been around the world, and they have a great history. And the world's become a lot smaller now with a computer, and nothing yeah. you don't know. Can't hide from it, right? No, it's yep. pretty hard. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we had a... A guy just sent me a DVD that shows him being presented to a high rank by his instructor who was supposedly a former student of mine. And he was, but he was a first and second degree black belt. And then he went uh, to another part of the country and all of a sudden he's a 10th degree black belt. Mm -hmm. So this guy has been basically lied to. And unfortunately, the person that was the 10th has passed away. And now can't this gentleman, yeah. I'm sorry? Can't be held accountable. No, he can't be. And the, the reality of it is this guy think he has, has all this legitimacy. And the whole history of his training was based on a lie. Yeah. Yes, See, and that's terrible. shameful. I think that's really bad for, for those that have that put the heart into it and they believe for themselves that they're doing the right things. And then to find out that the person that you've been trusting um, did you wrong? Well, and that's what happens is yeah. the students become the victims. Right. Always. The student will become the victim. And it is uh, it is a shame. I don't necessarily have a solution, unfortunately, other than do your homework before you get started. If you're a parent, don't be so concerned with maybe traveling an extra five minutes or an extra ten minutes yeah. when you're really investing in the your child's future. It could make all the difference in the world it for can. the future, too. So. Just a little bit of an expectation question, and I know that there's no person, I've been through this myself, there's no predictable behavior, but if someone puts everything they have, they show up several times a week, they do their training, they have some aptitude, and I'm asking this only so that someone can look at someone and go, well, you've only been in martial arts for three years, how could you be a third degree, right? I mean, this is the kind of question. What is the expectation of a really dedicated uh, person with some aptitude? To get their black belt or a degree of black belt. Let's get. The, let's start with their their black belt in the end. Well, that's depending the on the individual. By the way, for those that get the, that don't recognize, black belt makes you no expert. Black belt means that you've learned all the basics of that particular art. That's it. Everything else is is from there. Yep. Am I correct in that? Well, statement? it is. And at our school, a black belt is a teacher. Right. And that teacher, a kindergarten teacher, has to go to school for four years, has to go to college for four years. So I think that's the minimum that a black belt should there go, at least four years. Uh, you're going to get exceptions. We had a, a gentleman uh, named Jeff Newton, one of our top black belts, got his black belt in about, I don't know, three and a half years. But he was a tremendous athlete. You yeah. end up becoming a UFC fighter, number one ranked fighter in the United States There's for a couple of years. There's naturals everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. He is the exception. But normally it's between four and six years to get the black belt. Yeah. So now your studio put out 
I know during the 90s, a champion every year. You yourself were an, an international champion twice, am I right? That's, well, even more than twice, more than actually. Twice? Okay. We fought on teams all the way from the late 60s all the way up through. I think I retired in the, in the mid-80s, right in that area. And then, as I understand it, you've also been inducted into several Halls of Fame um, yes, throughout the years. And so your community recognition is significant. How do you feel about having the rank that you carry and having other people around well, you? Well, when Mr. Parker died in 1990, there was a handful of people that had been promoted to seventh degree. That was the highest martial artist that he had promoted. Mm -hmm. Elvis was a different rank, but that was because he was Elvis. But, and it was honor, right? Yeah, exactly. But there was only a few seventh degrees. I was blessed to be one of those. Now, throughout the years, I've gone up two degrees to ninth degree. I don't plan on going to a 10th degree ever. I'm going to continue to be a student. Now, I would like to say there are people that are wearing a 10th degree that are tremendous martial artists and tremendous men. I am not advocating that nobody should be a 10th degree. I am saying that it's not in my future. And I have some very good friends that I think the world of, it's not in their future. Somebody that puts on a 10th degree, they have to wear it. it myself, I will continue just to try to get better. I'll continue to learn. You know, I'm not going to be one that, that gains 50, 60 pounds and sit around and talk about the past. I'm going to be an active martial artist till the day I die, mm -hmm. and I'm going to continually try to improve. You know the old John Wooden story where he's like 99 years old, and he leans over to a friend of his, and he asks him if, he, if, he, if he'd ever told him that he loved him. And the guy pulled over the side of the road. He goes, no, coach, you never told me that, but I can't tell you how much it means to me. And at 99 years old, Coach Wooden goes, well, it's something I'm working on. You know? <laughs> I and it. I think that's how it is for me in martial arts. I that's just fantastic. want to continue to grow and continue to get better. Well, I think that means probably as much to your students as it does to you, because honestly, that, you know, I, if you stop learning, you stop living. And, and honestly, I, that's where I get to the point where how many, one, can be at that rank, and two, those that do don't want to accept or, as you put it, are unwilling to wear it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of pride in knowing the folks that are willing to hang back and say, you could, you could put that on there as an ego stripe if you wanted to, but it's not necessarily going to happen. Well, exactly. But, and again, I want to emphasize that a lot of times I've mentioned the 10th degree, and people that are 10th degrees, they get all paranoid. They think that I'm bad-mouthing them. And I really want to establish I'm not. They mm -hmm. could put on their rank. There's some people that have more time than I do under Mr. Parker. If they want to wear a 10th degree, it's completely warranted and, and deserved. But that's the point I was making early on, is that, that, that the community should make that decision. And, well, one and, would think, but yeah. we're always afraid of the word should. Yeah. Because this is so new, right. uh, again, relatively new, nobody knows really how to handle this yeah. power. Our instructor died 25 years ago. He was the person in charge, and, and in my opinion, he was the 10th degree, not another 10th degree. Yeah. So, I mean, there, that's a, there's a big difference that. I think the uniqueness for the founder of our system is something that's very special. And I personally don't feel that I will ever create a system like he did. I won't start the first major karate championship like he did. I won't start a curriculum that gives people an educational opportunity to take their art to another level. Uh, he did all of those things. That's pretty hard to duplicate. So yeah. these are just my opinions, and God bless somebody that doesn't want to have the same opinion. Well, and that's why we wanted you to have the opportunity to share, because honestly, you're, you are an icon in this industry, no matter what anybody says. The community respects you, and so I think it was an opportunity. I wanted you to have the opportunity to, again, not badmouth people, but to speak your mind about what's going on in this with this issue, because it's an issue, no matter how anybody It is an it. issue, and this really is... You know, my life's work. Since 1968, I've been a professional karate instructor, and it's been a true blessing. There's, I wouldn't trade what I've been able to do for a living for anything. I've been, I feel very, very fortunate. So um, it's something that I take a lot of pride in, and I think that at some point um, we have to draw a line. Yeah. And we have to draw a line on what's acceptable for us. But again, what's acceptable for me doesn't mean that somebody else has to adhere to that. Well, and I can tell you, like I said, as a low, as a low rank myself, um, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to give people the opportunity. But I also have to look up and say, I know that if I spent my whole life doing this and advancing and earning the right to be up here, to have people that either self-promote or community promote without, 
I don't know, without cause, I mm -hmm. guess would be the term I would use, is a bit disturbing. Um, so a couple things real quick, and then we're, we're coming to the end of our time here. Sure. So, um, first of all, for those kids that are thinking about getting into the, the arts today, I have concerns. I think MMA is an amazing thing, and the people that do it are some, some amazing people. But I'm also seeing, seeing the crippling injuries and the things that are coming out the other end of it. Um, and I think there's some balance that Kempo offers. that You can do both without coming out the other end to cripple. Um, what do you tell parents when the kids start thinking that they're wanted, they want to do MMA? And, you know, I say it's all good. It always depends upon the instructor. But I think what we try to do in martial arts is we try to create a sense of environment so kids can learn self-control. There's an old saying that self-control is controlling yourself so others don't have to, whether the other is a principal at your school or the police. Right. The idea in martial arts is that you have an environment that creates respect. And the respect is always not just the student showing respect to the instructor, but the instructor certainly showing respect to the student as well. Yeah. So that mutual respect, so children don't have to fear adults, they respect the adults and then through that the adults showing respect back to them and pretty soon this mutual respect makes for better citizens. I agree. Self-control, character development is something that martial arts brings to the table. And I think that was the thing I, that I did see in the MMA world is that, that it's a proving ground. Unlike a lot of the arts where it's it's not let's not call it a dance, but it's it's there's not as much of a proving operation going on there. So the respect I have for MMA people is immense. Yes, I just wonder sometimes if the kids that are coming in too early, are, you know. But that's well, it can be. Ground. You know, their idea of problems resolution is ground and pound, and yeah. then that's the case. You end up basically cultivating felons, yeah. as opposed to teaching somebody to have the confidence to de-escalate, get away from trouble, um, and be able to handle their emotions. You know, emotion is the enemy, Amen. whether it's oh, anger love. or whatever. Yeah. But if they can control their emotions, think clearly, being able to handle the situations without losing control. So let's talk answer. really quickly in the two minutes that I have left about royal families. Um, I understand that you have really dedicated your life to this charity, Royal Families. Why don't you tell us a little bit about well, it? Well, it's a very wonderful organization that was started here in Newport Beach, Costa Mesa, by a gentleman by the name of Wayne and actually him and his wife, Diane Tesh. This will be our 11th year coming up in next March. Uh, at this point, we've been able to throw a tournament every year. We throw a karate tournament and a golf tournament, throw the golf tournament over at Costa Mesa Country Club, and we've been able to uh, raise a considerable amount of money to help these children. Uh, our charity, Royal Families, was chosen as probably the highest rating of how they handle their money than any of the other charities in Oregon. It was voted number one. That's fantastic. Yeah, it is. So it's a great group Having of people. Having worked as a board member on several charities, I, that's a pretty fantastic. Yeah, everyone's thing. concern is what percentage of the money goes to the kids. And in yeah. this case, especially at our event, it's 100% of the money that's that awesome. we raise goes that's to an children. That's incredible statement. Well, it is. We have no paid employees. Nobody gets it. What we did at our school that was very important early is I separated myself from the money. So just like Billy Graham does, Billy Graham does not handle the money uh, at his church and his ministry. Mm -hmm. I don't either. We have a gentleman by the name of Dr. Rod Smith who is a uh, former Coast Guard captain who is a professor of economics at Cal State Long Beach. Oh, cool. He handles all of the money. I don't handle it all. That way anybody that would say that our money is being handled inappropriately would be completely fabricating a lie. Right. But it happens. And I mean, well, it's true. And charities have to be able to have um, impeccable reputation and, and to be in a 100% defensible position. And that's a really good place to be. Yeah. And unfortunately, in martial arts, there are people that have a jealousy and ego gets involved. And when something starts going real well, they'll want to undermine that with false claims. So we made it very simple. I 100% do not handle the money, so any claims would be completely That's fantastic. wrong. fantastic. Well, thank you so much for, for my honoring pleasure. me with your presence again. I, I, I love chatting with you, and I think thank you. You know, you've done some amazing things for the community, and it looks like you're going to continue to do that for many years to come, and thank you for that. As long as I'm vertical, I'll be doing karate. Yes, Thanks, thank Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kevin McDonald, and you've been watching Facets Television, and with us today is the iconic Bob White, and we hope that you'll come again. For information on the Bob and Barbara White Invitational and Donate to Royal Family Kids, you can go to our website at www.bobwhiteinvitational.com. And for information on our karate studio, 
you could go to www.bwkenpo, K-E-N as in Nancy, P-O, dot com.